Dr. Ganeshan sir is from Coimbatore. College is AK Jain College from Chennai. And uh, his profession, Commerce Professor, NGM College, Polochi. Polochi sir? Yes sir. Yes. Polochi. So retired as head of the Department of the Commerce. Uh, post retirement, he is MBA Director, VCB College, Coimbatore. VLB or VCB? VLB sir. VLB, College, Coimbatore. Former Principal, uh, Tech City <coughs> College, Coimbatore. So he is interested in teaching. So we all welcome him uh, today. He is uh, incidentally Saundarya's uh, father also, but that's not the point of uh, interest here. He is a orator, he gives speeches, he encourages the young people. That's why we called here. Uh, since long time we were thinking that uh, we will uh, uh, we will call somebody like sir to give some speeches so that we get something learning out of their seniority and experience. Uh, I will ask sir to give lecture uh, related to the our staff. The topic is towards excellence. Is that towards excellence? Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, everyone. Respected Dr. Chandra Mohan, the founder of this great hospital, the mentor for everyone present here, doctors present here, paramedical staff, administrative staff, marketing staff, ladies and gentlemen, I am immensely pleased to be here this evening for this program. Mine will not be a PowerPoint presentation, but I will try to make it powerful. Now, uh, my topic will be on towards excellence. Everyone, everybody wants to excel in life. So life is a journey of dreams. You realize one dream, you are on the threshold of another dream. You realize one dream, you are on the threshold of another dream. You finish your degree, you finish your PG, you finish super speciality, it goes on, on and on. You realize one dream, you are on the threshold of another dream. Have a dream, keep chasing the dream. Never relent, keep chasing the dream. And after finishing your studies, you will have a feeling that you are at the crossroads. At the crossroads, it means in the literal sense, you are in a road junction, not knowing which way to go. In the figurative sense, it means you want to take a decision. You have to make a choice. See, life is only this full of choices. If your choice is right, you can scale even the Himalayas. Nothing will be a problem. In case it goes wrong, you will be nowhere. In a lighter mind, it is said, if you become, if your choice is good, you become Adi Shankara. Else you become Otto Shankar. Otto Shankar is a, was a noted criminal in Chennai. And uh, that, that's how I come back. If your choice is good, you become auto, or sorry, you become Adi Shankara, else you become auto Shankara. So I am sure you all made the right choice. You are into the medical profession, and it is the noblest of professions. I repeat, like teaching, medicine is the noblest of professions. There can be nothing nobler than this. There can be nothing nobler than this. Having taken up the noblest of profession, it is your duty to give your best. No compromise. You have to give your best. And how to give your best? You have to first uh, satisfy yourself. You have made the right choice. You have made the right choice. Having made the choice, you should have a sense of pride. You should have a sense of pride. Why, I, why I say you should have a sense of pride? Normally, when people take a decision later on, they regret. I should have become an engineer. I should have become a chartered accountant. I should have become a cost accountant. I should have become an IAS officer. This, that, and all. People confuse you. But once you decide, you think 100 times before you take a decision. After decide, after taking the decision, never look back. Give your best. So you should have a sense of pride in your decision. Then be passionate about your job. Do it with enthusiasm. Be <coughs> passionate. Then you start, you start enjoying your job. Once you start enjoying your job, you will achieve excellence. What is excellence? Excellence is infinite. As you get closer to it, it goes away from you. That is why we say it is exciting. I repeat, 
excellence is infinite. As you get closer to it, it moves away from you. That is why we say it is exciting. How to achieve excellence? Very simple. You don't do anything for the sake of it. Never do anything for the sake of it. Do for the love of it. Do for the love of it and get lost in the job. Do for the love of it and get lost in the job. Excellence is automatic. You should have heard about our MS Subalakshmi, the Nightingale of India. The first lady or first person in the music world to be honored, the highest civilian award. She got the Bharat Ratna. During her days when she was performing, Pandit Nehru used to be seated in, seated in the first row. She will never bother as to who seated in the first row or in the middle row or in the last row. She will simply go on performing. She will get lost in the divinity. So only you get lost in your job, you will achieve excellence. Excellence means when there is excellence, there is no need for explanation. Your work will explain. Your work speaks. You don't need to speak about it. So whatever you do, you do it with passion. Excellence is automatic. So I mean, with this introduction, uh, we'll go to the main uh, subject, how to achieve excellence. Everybody wants to win. You want to win, I want to win, I want to achieve excellence. What to do? A lot of planning is required. So we plan. So if your plan is right, everything goes well. You have to plan perfectly and execute with precision. Winners have programs. I repeat, winners have programs. Losers have excuses. Losers have a lot of excuses. Never give excuse. Then always have a positive frame of mind. Always have a positive frame of mind. If you have a positive frame of mind, nothing is impossible. It is said, you cannot have a good day with a bad attitude. You cannot have a good day with a bad attitude and you can never have a bad day with a good attitude. A person with a positive mind is like a fruit for all seasons. Practice positive thoughts until they become your habit. Keep practicing positive thoughts until they become your habit. So this uh, is the starting point. So you have to, you need to have a plan. You need to execute your plan with precision. How to achieve excellence? You need to improve your competence. Then you need to practice competence. Then you need to have confidence. Once you have the competence, you need to have the confidence to do the job. <laughs> then you need to have composure. You need to have the communication skill. You need to have a dream. You need to have dedication. You need to have determination. You need to have a discipline. These eight points, anything given in a mathematical model will be easy to understand and comprehend. So that is why I made it eight point formula. You need to have confidence. You need to improve your competence. You need to have confidence. You need to have composure. You need to have good communication skills, then you need to have a dream, dedication, determination, discipline. You know, all these things you have, nothing is impossible, you can scale even the Himalayas, nothing is impossible. So coming to competence, you have to improve your, how to improve your competence? Only keep reading, reading keeps ignorance away, reading keeps ignorance away. If you read, you can lead, if you read, you can lead. And learning is you know, from whom to whom you keep learning. There is no end to it at all. You know, recently in 2019, Nobel Prize for Chemistry has been awarded to a 97-year-old professor, Professor John Goodenough. He is sharing the Nobel Prize in Chemistry with two other persons. Just simply mind-boggling. Just imagine a 97-year-old person getting a Nobel Prize in Chemistry and Pressman asked him, do you still go to the lab? You know, what was his reply? Do you want me to sit idle after retirement? I don't want to wait to die. I repeat, I don't want to wait to die. I want to keep up on accomplishing. So this is the inspiration. You should draw inspiration from such people. A 97 year old person can get Nobel Prize means something unimaginable. You have to see to believe it. So that is, you have to improve your competence. Only if you improve your competence, you have to keep abreast of the latest developments. As doctors, you have to attend conferences, present papers, keep on improving. Olden days, Laparoscopic surgery, our uh, Dr. Parni Vila of Gem Hospital is a pioneer. He has uh, authored books. In his books have been prescribed in uh, Leeds University, if I am right. So now we have this robotic surgery. Everything, every day there is improvement. Especially in medical field, you have to keep abreast of the latest developments, else you will be out. So improve your competence. <coughs> the next thing is about confidence. Unless you have self confidence, you cannot achieve anything in life. You need to have self confidence. Unless you have confidence, you cannot perform a surgery. And with regard to other nursing assistants, paramedical staff, supporting staff, everyone needs confidence. Unless you have confidence, you cannot do anything. 
There also I can give you some example. Anything given with an example, it will be easy to understand, it will be easy to retain and retrieve at the appropriate time. Again, to go to, to, go to cricket, we have uh, we had one Mansoor Ali Khan Patauti, a celebrated captain. He was the captain of the Indian cricket team in the late 60s. In the late 60s. You know, he lost his uh, sight in one eye. He lost his sight in one eye. You know what the statement was at that point of time? I lost my sight, not my vision. I lost my sight, not my vision. This year is very important, Vision 2020. Abdul Kalam only was uh, responsible. Abdul Kalam only introduced the idea of vision. You need to have a vision. Everybody had, needs to have a vision. I am very happy that you are uh, associated with Spriti Hospital where you have a great mentor like Dr. Chandramohan. I am not uh, trying to, uh, what to say, flatter him. I am not trying to, it is real. He is a great motivator. You are really, really lucky to be here. That's why I told you I made the right shots. You can give a big hand to himself. <laughs> so, Mr. Patavdi said, uh, I lost my sight, not my vision. You know what he did? He is an aggressive, he was an aggressive captain. And it was under his dynamic leadership, aggressive leadership. India registered its first victory in foreign soil. That is New, New Zealand in the year 1968. 1968, India registered its first victory in foreign soil. He had four great spinners, legends. B.S. Chandrasekhar, E.S. Prasanna, Venet Raghavan and Vishen Singh Badi. And with them, he was able to win the uh, title for India. So, nothing is impossible. In 2018, we celebrated 50 years of victory in foreign soil. Another great example I can give you about Narayan Mokya of Infosys. You know, it, it, he started in a humble way. He is the son of a school teacher. Son of a school teacher, like me. I am also, my mother was a teacher. And we belong to a family of teachers. My sister was working as a teacher. My wife is a teacher. Everyone is a teacher. And I am happy that uh, Saundarya and Hemnath are here. They are also learning here. They will also become teachers in due course in the process. They will practice medicine as well as they will be teachers also. <laughs> then, uh, our Narayana Murthy, he started Infosys company in the year 1981 with just 10,000 rupees. Some six, he and six others joined together to so start this company. Six, only 70,000 rupees. By 2015, in a matter of 35 years, it is. it became a 50 billion dollar company. It became a 50 billion dollar company employing about 1,99,000 people. Just imagine. Humble beginning, son of a school teacher, and uh, with, within three decades and a half, he is able to establish a, a big company. This company, you know, it was started in a small two-room apartment in Pune. Small two-room apartment in Pune. Now, the company was the biggest software training campus in the world. Biggest software training campus in the world. It is located on a sprawling 270-acre campus. Two-room apartment starting. Now, the company software training center is 270-acre campus. Just imagine. The cost is 260 crore, 16,000 square feet built up area, 2,000 rooms to accommodate 4,000 trainees on a twin sharing basis. And uh, Infosys is the first Indian company to be listed in the New York Stock Exchange. Mysore, sir. This is Mysore. Okay. Training center is in Mysore. Mysore. Training center is in Mysore. It is the first Indian company to be listed in the New York Stock Exchange. Not only that, it was rated as the most admired company by the U.S. Wall Street Journal. U.S. Wall Street Journal, you should have heard of. It was rated as the most admired company for not for one year, 10 consecutive years. So it is easy to reach the top, but difficult to remain at the top. It is difficult to reach. They were able to maintain it for 10 years. It was possible. And it is all because of confidence. You know what they say? Narayana uh, Murthy observed like this. In our business, the only constant is change. The only constant is change. That means you keep on innovating. You keep on innovating. Only if you can innovate, you can sustain. You think out of the box, it is possible. So, Narayana Murthy was able to do it. We can also do it. Anything can be done. It is nothing is impossible. You understand? You are all young, you can do anything. <laughs> then, coming to composure. Confidence, we are seeing. Composure. Composure means you should stay cool in all situations. Best example is my son in law. He will always remain composed. He will never get tense. He will never get tense. Always cool. Captain cool. He used to tell very often. So, we, we, only way you need to have composure when you perform a surgery, when you take up something, you may encounter some difficulty. You may encounter some difficulty. You should not panic. Never press the panic button. Once you start pressing the panic button, nothing can be done. You will lose your thing, uh, thought process will be out. Nothing can be done. You cannot go ahead. Always keep your goal. Only if you keep your goal, you can achieve many things in life. So, uh, again going to cricket, you have got MS Dhoni, great uh, former cricket captain and uh, 
We will celebrate Prime silently, accept defeat graciously. Celebrate Prime silently, accept defeat graciously. Whenever the team wins, he will remain in the backyard. He will send the performer to the front. And whenever the team loses, he will come to the front and take up the responsibility. And when India won the Champions Trophy in 2013, India is the first country to hold both the World Cup as well as Champions Trophy at the, at the same point of time, after Australia. India is the second nation to hold both these cups at the same time. Pressman asked him, what is your next agenda? His reply was very simple. I want to win the next game. You keep on winning. You do the next surgery well. You can, do, you can create a Guinness record. You have to have the confidence. You need to have the composure. The again, uh, this 2017 World Cup final, India was uh, bowling the last over. Jovinder Sharma was asked to bowl the last over. And he was very tense. He spoke to the captain. So I am... Uh, Tony and very tense. He simply said, Don't worry, I've got six balls to pay it yesterday, man. If you lose, it is my responsibility. If you lose, it is my responsibility. I've got six balls to pay it yesterday. We did create history. It is because of his attitude. Similarly, so another example I can give about Kane Williams, an excellent captain. He was a, in a, recently we saw the World Cup match. Most of you would have seen it. It was a thrilling match. It was a gut wrenching defeat for the New Zealand team. The, but Kane Williamson and his team, they behaved with poison grace. They behaved with poison grace. You know, he said, we never lost the match on the pitch. No one won the match. We lost the match on account of some print rules, fine print rules. England were the crowned winners. England were the crowned winners. But New Zealand won the world and won the fans across the globe. Won the fans across the globe. So keep cool in any situation. Whatever be the situation, keep cool. Another example also I can give you. You should have heard about this uh, Randy Posh. He has uh, last lecture. He was a professor by profession. And uh, he got married a little late. And he had uh, he got married to a woman of his dream. He had three loving children. And uh, the eldest one is 10, the youngest one is maybe 2 years old. And he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. The doctor told him, he will not live for more than 6 months. Anyone else? Finished crestfallen, they would have got crestfallen. He kept his school. You know what he said? I am a lecturer. <coughs> if I were a painter, I would have painted a picture. If I were a musician, I would have composed music. I will give a lecture. I'm not boring, sir. I will give a lecture. It will be my last lecture. It is about the joys of life. See his statement. I want to teach my children what I would have taught them over the next 20 years. I want to teach my children what I would have taught them over the next 20 years. I want to do all the, all the logistics so that my family remains comfortable in my absence. I want to do all the logistics so that my family remains comfortable in my absence. This was the statement. And you know, this book, last lecture, more than 5 million copies have been sold and he has become immortal. We can still talk about him. We still talk about him. This is composure. You stay cool in any situation. Never panic. Never press the panic button. Whatever be your job, whether you are a marketing professional, you may come across several types of customers. Some customers will be irritating you. You have to deal with them with patience. Patience is at most important. Always keep your cool. Only if you keep your cool, you can achieve many things. Many things. Then coming to communication. You need to be a good communicator. You need to be a good communicator. You should be able to articulate your ideas well. You should be able to articulate your ideas well. So only if you are able to send a message, See, what I intend, I should be able to convey to you. I intend something, I convey something different means your communication is poor. So a good communication will serve a relationship. A good communication will serve a relationship. Otherwise, it will sever the relationship. It will snap the relationship. So communication has to be effective. Communication has to be effortless. Whatever you want to convey, you should be able to convey effectively at the same time, effortlessly, though technically, you should be able to do it with ease. How can you do it? You can do it only if you read. Read books. Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan, the second president of the Indian Republic, second president of Sarvapalli, he observed like this. Books have been my constant and unfailing companions. See the statement. Books have been my constant and unfailing companions. Only if you keep reading, you can improve. Then, uh, if you, as I already told you, if you read, you can lead. Then, uh, Sunil Gavaskar, a former uh, Indian captain, uh, opener, celebrated opener, a man who created a lot of history during his heydays, 
you know one match we lost you know what he said we lost the match because we played sensationally not sensibly we played sensationally not sensibly so you do things always do things sensibly only if you do things sensibly you can achieve your goal this was namaste statement and similarly our uh, tendulkar sir when he retired he observed like this my life between 22 years for 24 years has come to an end he retired in november 2015 he made he has failed that he is a tensional fail person see how much he has improved so you should raise to the occasion so he said like this my life between 22 years for 24 years has come to an end so this is the statement so you have to keep improving you have to keep learning and uh, my father had the vision to get me a newspaper even when i was in 8th standard he got me english newspaper the hindu and uh, that helped me in a big way to communicate the way i'm doing the way you write the way you speak everything matters the way you write the way you speak everything matters so you should read newspapers watch english news channels you can improve don't get lost in mega serials don't get lost in mega serials that is a very bad trend in many homes many people get lost in mega serials try to watch some english news definitely you can even pick a commentary you can listen very good so communication is very important and only if you improve your communication you can be a successful professional whatever we are a doctor or a paramedical staff or whatever it is marketing people communication is very important the way you speak you have to sell your product one satisfied customer will give you 100 customers one satisfied customer will have will give you 100 customers so communication is very very important unless you are able to do well you must be able to convince the customer or your patient or client whatever it is or the person maybe so having seen the first four things we we'll go to next one dream you need to have a dream uh, it is abdul kalam said dream is not something you get in sleep dream is something that keeps you awake dream is not something that you get in sleep dream is something that keeps you awake and uh, the founder of the reliance empire ambani durbay ambani father of mukesh and anil you know what he said our dream should be bigger and efforts greater our dream should be bigger and efforts greater he was born on 28 december 1932 28 december 1932 at the age of 16 he moved to eden eden uh, 3019 km 1629 nautical miles 3019 km 1629 nautical miles four hours by flight from bombay at the age of 16 he moved out of india he got employed on a salary 300 rupees can you just imagine Mukesh Ambani is the 11th richest person in India. In the, in the world, sorry, 11th richest person in the world. He has been able to maintain it for two consecutive years. 11th richest person in the world. So his his father started on a salary of 300 rupees in Yemen. Then returns to India in the year 1962. In 1965, he sets up the Reliance Commercial Corporation. Meaning, very humble. He is also he was also a son of a school teacher. Uh, fortunately, all the children of teachers do well. <laughs> in one way i am happy and that i am a teacher then uh, ambani he returns to india in the, 19, in the year 1962 and 65 he sets up the reliance commercial corporation you know amount of money invested hardly 15000 rupees only 15000 15, not 50 15000 rupees his office was just a 350 square feet office maybe only this much size 350 square feet office one table two chairs sorry three chairs two assistants one table three chairs two assistants one telephone they were at 50 square feet one table three chairs two assistants one telephone that's all that was his beginning by 2012 the company had 85000 employees they contributed 5% of central government's income tax and direct tax revenue 5% of central government's tax revenue how this was possible he had no oxford education he had no family capital he had no oxford education he had no family capital he had that vision he had that dream he was able to achieve and the company was listed as the one of the top 100 companies in the firm, uh, world's fortune 500 uh, companies world's fortune 500 companies it was it found a place in the first uh, 100 companies it was possible and you know he died in the year 2002 in bridge candy hospital bombay and uh, then prime minister of india atal bihari vajpay being a poet he observed like this we have lost iconic proof For what an ordinary individual, for what an ordinary individual can achieve in his own lifetime, if ignited by the spirit of enterprise and driven by determination, I repeat, 
Atal Bihari Vajpayee, then Prime Minister of the country, observed like this. We have lost iconic proof. There can be no other proof. For what an ordinary individual can achieve in his lifetime, if ignited by the spirit of enterprise. Enterprise means being creative, being enterprising. If ignited by the spark, you should have ignited by the spirit of enterprise and driven by determination. You need to have determination to achieve everything. The then governor of Maharashtra, P.C. Alexander, this star was flying high in the sky. He was able to do it high. He was dreaming big and he was able to translate all his dreams into reality by virtue of his tenacity and determination. So tenacity, determination, everything is required. Unless you have, you can't achieve anything in life. And in cricket, we have heard of man of the match, man of the series, everything. And this Dhiruvay Ambani was named as man of the century. Man of the century by the Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Even in, in every district there will be a Chamber of Commerce. All these chambers will get affiliated to the Federation. So Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry named him as the man of the century. So it all was possible because he had that dream. You need to have a vision. Every organization should prepare a vision statement. Only if you have a vision statement, you can march ahead in the right direction. So that is dream. Then dedication. It's not enough if you have a dream. You have to translate the dream into reality. How can I do it? You need to have dedication. Dedication. Again, going to Kalam. With your involvement, you can never fail. With your involvement, you can never fail. And without your involvement, you can never succeed. Without your involvement, you can never succeed. And again, he also repeated, don't take rest after the first victory. Don't take rest after the first victory. Because you fail on the second occasion. You fail on the second occasion. There are many lips waiting to say that your first victory was a sheer lack. I repeat, don't take rest after the first victory. Because you fail on the second occasion. There are many lips waiting to say that your first victory was a sheer luck. So that is how Kalam said. Again, uh, for dedication, you can give Sachin Tendulkar also. When he retired in November 2015, you know what he said? Cricket is my oxygen. What other message you want? So your profession is your oxygen. Your job is your oxygen. Cricket is your main oxygen. So that was his statement. Then do your job passionately. Do your job passionately. And if you don't need any position or uh, to do good things. You don't need an office, you don't need a position. Even if you are given a speaker's job, you can do it in a unique way. I am reminded of what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. observed. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. observed like this. What do you observe? Even if you are given a sweeper's job, do it as Michelangelo painted. Do it as Michelangelo painted. Do it as Shakespeare wrote poetry or as Beethoven composed music. Michelangelo's painting, Beethoven's music, Shakespeare's poetry. See the comparison. Do it like that. In case you do like that, the hosts of heaven and earth would pause to say, the hosts of heaven and earth would pause to say, here lived an excellent sweeper. Here lived an excellent sleeper, who did the job that's exceedingly well. So like that you should do. You don't need any supervisor to do your job. In Japan there is an amazing work culture. In Japan there is an amazing work culture. In Germany there is no supervisory category stop at all. In Germany there is no supervisor. You should be true to your conscience. Everything else works. Be true to your conscience. And you should grow with the organization. You should grow with the organization. Your career graph has to be the same as that of the organization. Narayan Murthy, in one of the companies and in general meetings observed like this, my employees generated wealth. I want to share my wealth with my employees. I believe in sharing the wealth generated by my employees with my employees. I repeat, I believe in sharing the wealth generated by my employees with my employees. See the statement. See the power of the statement. So that is how big people speak. So you need to be committed. There is no need for any supervisor. Your conscience is your supervisor. And you should grow with the organization and your career graph has to be the same as that of the organization. And as a doctor or as a, you should have a space for your patient in your prayer. As a doctor, you should have a space for your patient in your prayer. That is dedication. As a doctor, you should have a space for your patient in your prayer. Then when you leave, you should leave a good legacy. What is legacy? What you leave for the what you leave for posterity, that is legacy. Parents leave property for the children. As a as an employee, when you leave the company, a retiring CEO has left, leaves the organization with uh, integrity and uh, loyalty. So we should have values. 
you should leave with a reputation. What you leave for this next generation is important. In what you are good at, you must be useful to the society. In what you are good at, you must be useful to the society. So be dedicated, leave a good legacy. What you leave for posterity. When anybody leaves the organization, you should leave with a good name, reputation. So that is with regard to dedication. If you have dedication, you can, so as I told you, to translate the dream into reality, you need to have dedication. And again, when you when you are when the work is in progress, you may encounter a lot of difficulties. You need to have determination. Determination, unless you have determination, you cannot achieve anything. Determination, I can give again uh, your own man, B.C. Roy. Dr. B.C. Roy, so what is given being given every year? B.C. Roy, uh, he was born in a family of five children. He lost his mother at the age of 14. He wanted to become a doctor. Then what happened? He studied in Calcutta Presidency College. Later he joined Calcutta Medical College, finished his MBBS, wanted to take up higher studies in UK. He wrote, here only our story starts. He wrote the entrance examination, like our week. He wrote once, he wrote twice, he wrote twice, he wrote five times. He never got to. How many times he would have written? Can anyone guess? How many times he would have written? He never passed the fifth time, he never passed the tenth time, he never passed the fifteenth time, twentieth time, twenty-fifth time. He wrote 29 times. 29 times he was unsuccessful. 30th time he was successful. This is determination. Never get uh, upset. You should keep your cool. 29 times, will anyone have the courage, guts to take the examination the 30th time? 30th time he was successful. Then only what happens? In two years, he surprised the dean. The dean was astonished. He cleared both MRCP and FRCS in less than two years. You know, it's a rare combination. Medicine and surgery. He finished MRCP, FRCS, in less than two years. And he want, then, then they wanted to retain him, but he wanted to come back to India. And he was a very popular doctor. Excellent diagnostic skills, affordable treatment. What a doctor needs? Good diagnostic skills. Treatment should be affordable, not like corporate hospitals where we face the public. I'm sorry to say this. And here, the treatment was affordable, excellent diagnostics. He was very popular, but he felt he has something to do for the society. He gave up the medical profession. He joined the freedom movement at that time. India became independent. He was big chief minister of West Bengal, and we may call it Shams or anything else. He died the day he was born, 1st July. 1st July was dead. And India has honored him by celebrating his birthday as Doctor's Day in India. He has become immortal. He has immortal. We still talk about this is determination. In your profession, you come across so many things. Whatever be your job, you are a doctor, you are a paramedical staff, nursing staff, uh, theater assistant, marketing man, uh, office staff, anybody, you need to have determination for whatever you do. Then, coming to discipline. So, we have seen dream, dedication, determination, discipline. So, this is primarily, but though, it, though it comes last, it is by no means the last. Discipline, there are many things, many aspects of discipline, we can start like great things. One is being punctual, very, very important. I am very happy that sir was very conscious about time. We started at the stroke of time. So, you should appreciate this punctuality. The number two, speaking the truth, that's very important. I am not telling guys. I am not in the habit of telling guys, I can assure you. I never tell guys. Even for small things, I don't tell guys. Then, maintaining your physical fitness. Sir is very conscious about it. Maintaining your physical fitness. So, what is uh, punctuality? Punctuality means doing things at the right time. In his joke, clearly said, Fools and wise men do the same thing. Fools and wise men do the same thing, but not at the same time. Wise men become leaders. Wise men become leaders. I repeat, fools and wise men do the same thing, but not at the same time. So if the appointment is 11 o'clock, be at 11 o'clock. If you turn up at 11.15, you are failure. You give hundreds of explanations. It will not be right. You have not met the target. You have to be on time. Punctuality. Postponement, another bad habit is we have a tendency to postpone things. Postponement, we call it procrastination. Procrastination. Procrastination leads to stress. Postponement leads to stress. Don't put the files in your drawers. You are invited. I happened to attend a bank manager's meet regarding stress management. One speaker told like this. Don't put the file in your drawers and invite stress. If there is anything, do it immediately. Because constantly it will keep on irritating you. So if there is a don't postpone things. So, that is a uh, thing, uh, anything has to be done on time. Then, uh, as I told you, uh, we have a tendency, 
when we go to the airport or to take a flight or to catch the train, what happens? <coughs> if you are regularly flying or if you are tra traveling by train, there are two methods. One is leave at the last minute, which most of us do. Leave at the last minute. Then another is start 10 minutes early. To leave at the last minute, what happens? You invite lot of stress. You invite lot of stress. You start uh, asking the driver to drive a little faster. You will keep looking at the watch. You will get stuck up in some traffic signal. You will try to jump the signal. And then you go to ultimately uh, reach the airport or a railway station. Then barely then uh, security check, luggage scan, everything. Everywhere will there be queue. And whenever you go reach, the queue will be longer. You get stressed and you try to explain to everyone, I got a little delayed, I got a little delayed. A stressful face, but it posing a normal face. All these things can be avoided. Barely you make it to the flight, barely you take the train. Even if you miss the flight, nothing will happen. Suppose railway station, you try to board a moving train, you may lose, you may miss the train, you may fall down, you may lose your limbs. It happens. I've seen from people falling from uh, railway compartments while trying to board a moving train. Never board a moving train. Never get down from a moving train. That is a very important thing. You may lose your limbs, or sometimes you lose your right horse. So never do it. If you miss the train, nothing will happen. So always start on time. So being punctual is very important. You have to do things on time, or else it will not be a useful. Then importantly, we all think that time is infinite. Time is not infinite. Anything you can buy in this world, anything you can buy in this world, time you cannot get. Nine January gone is gone. You will not get. Again, to quote Randy Posh, Randy Posh, you know, I told you about it. He had pancreatic cancer and he passed away because of his pancreatic cancer. He had only six months to live. He went on a shopping and uh, he got the card swiped twice. He got the card swiped twice by mistake. Inadvertently, he lost $15 in the process. He wanted to get back the money. When you get the card swiped twice, you have to explain to the shopkeeper that he lost lose 15 minutes. So he had to make a choice. 15 minutes for the family or 15 dollars for him. You know what decision he took? 15 minutes for the family is more important. So time is finite. So never take things for granted. Never waste your time. Do things on time. Be punctual. Punctuality is very important. So if you... Then coming to the next aspect. Speaking the truth. Always speak the truth. What is the wait, what is the advantage in speaking the truth? You don't need to remember what you spoke on an earlier occasion. When you speak the truth, you don't need to remember what you spoke on an earlier occasion. And why do you tell a lie to escape from an unpleasant situation? Suppose you have made a mistake and you are reporting to your director. You are trying to hide facts. Later on, somehow it will be found out. Never make a mistake. Never try to because you want to escape from an unpleasant situation. Speak the truth always. Speak the truth always. And uh, there is a devil inside telling you, come on, tell lies, tell lies. You speak the truth and shame the devil. Speak. That was how my teacher used to tell me. You speak the truth and shame the devil man. He was in school. So, always speak the truth. When there is, uh, when you speak the truth, you can get, get the courage to face any situation. When you speak the truth, you get the courage to face any situation. So, punctuality is important. Procrastination should never be done. Then, uh, Speaking the truth is very important. And finally, physical fitness. What is physical fitness? You have to stay fit. Unless you stay fit, you cannot achieve anything in life. Because you can nowadays we have a lot of stress. You get diabetic, you get PP, everything. So, Rajini Kamp was here last week for a pre release function of Triple Dabba. He is 70, you know. He is very healthy and healthy. You know, he was, his statement I saw in the papers. The secret for my good health is. He, Say, say it like this, my belief, I expect less, I expect less, I eat moderately, I eat moderately, I should appreciate some of it. even I don't have that, uh, I am somewhat, uh, when, it's, when it is tasty I take it, <coughs> you will say no, even if the food is very good, no, I limit, so eat moderately, sleep normally, sleep normally, exercise well, exercise well. Talk less, talk less, I repeat. So expect less, then eat moderately, sleep normally, exercise well, then talk less. So these things are essential to stay fit. You have to stay fit. Unless you are fit, you cannot achieve anything in life. Because you get, uh, if you become diabetic, finished. 
Of course, it is not a disease, it is not an end because you are all doctors, I should not tell you, I will be carrying the colds, mucus, you don't want to do it. So, this is with regard to discipline and we have got almost all points. So, in order to achieve your dream, you need to have a vision, you need to have a dream, you need to improve your competence, you need to improve your confidence, you need to be confident, you need to be composed in all situations, whatever be the difficulty, you need to be composed in all situations, you need to have good communications, you should be a good communicator. Then you should have a dream, to realize that dream, you should have dedication, when you encounter difficulties, you should have determination and you need to have discipline. If all these things you have, you can achieve what you want. So you can be what you want to be. You can be what you want to be. So only thing is you have to identify your priorities. Never think small. Get out of the syndrome of thinking small. Get out of the syndrome of, syndrome of thinking small. Think big. You are all young. You are all energetic. You have an open mind. You are all young. You are, have an open mind. Think big and think out of the box, you can do anything. <coughs> so be focused, be focused. Again to put, uh, to say, uh, we have an example, Abhinav Bindra. He won the first gold medal for India in Olympics, in shooting competition. Abhinav Bindra won the first gold medal for India in Olympics. So be focused like Abhinav Bindra. Never be casual. Being casual means work from 9 to 6, 9 to 7. That's all. Working us. Be committed. You have an option. You can be with cash or you can be committed. Only if you are committed, you can achieve things. By commitment, I mean you should have passion for the job. Never look at the clock. Never look at the clock. So be focused. Don't be cash or be passionate. Then have a passion for excellence. Have a passion for excellence. What is excellence? When there is excellence, your work speaks. I already told you. Excellence is the result of CRD. Caring more than others. Risking more than others, dreaming more than others, expecting more than others. I repeat, CRB, guiding more than others, risking more than others, dreaming more than others, expecting more than others. When there is excellence, your work speaks, you don't need to speak about it. Then, an artist was getting an award in a function. Pressman asked him, which is your best painting? He never referred to any of the earlier paintings, the next one. So that is why we say excellence is infinite. Excellence you cannot catch. It is there. So the next painting will be my excellent one. So like that, you have to be focused, be never be casual, be committed, have a passion for excellence, identify your priorities. You can be what you want to be. You can be what you want to be. You can realize your dream, you can grow with the organization, your career path will be the same as that of the organization, and success is in big things. Happiness is in small things. Success is in big things. Happiness is in small things. Meditation is in nothing. God is in everything. And repeat, success is in big things. Happiness is in small things. Meditation is in nothing. God is in everything. Today well lived makes every yesterday a dream of happiness. Today well lived makes every yesterday a dream of happiness. And every tomorrow a vision of God. I'm very happy for all your patient listening. Thank you very much for all your patient listening. I wish you all the best in your career. I wish all of you come up very well in life, that all your dreams be realized and every all your dreams get translated into reality. My good wishes to everyone here. My <coughs> special regards to Dr. Chandra Mohan, Sir Professor Dr. Ramakrishna and uh, other team members here. Thank you very much for inviting me and honoring me. Great.